Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how to set up deck A and deck B in Ableton. Um, this is your first channel and your second channel that you're going to be using to blend songs together. Uh, it kind of mix, uh, mimics a traditional DJ setup with, like, let's say, turntable one, turntable two. And then over in your master channel here to the right, uh, this is where your crossfader is. So this is where you will um, actually fade between the two tracks that are going on and, and mix and blend them. So um, to set that up, though, you're going to want to assign deck A to uh, the A side of the crossfader and deck B to the B side of the crossfader. So that means now that if you have the crossfader all the way to the right, you're just going to be getting audio from deck B. And if your crossfader is all the way to the left, you're going to be getting audio just from deck A. And in the middle plays a blend of both of them or a combination of the two. So that's how you set up your decks for crossfading. It's pretty straightforward. And now we're going to talk about setting up uh, effects in each of these channels. Um, and I like a pretty simple effect setup, nothing too extravagant. Um, just something that basically mimics what a traditional DJ setup would have. So we're going to um, go over here to our device browser and we are going to unfold the audio effects folder here. And the first thing we're going to do is drop an audio effect rack on both channels. And um, the three effects that I like to use um, are EQ3 and you want to make sure that you're actually dragging it into the audio effect rack where it says drop audio effects here in the smaller window. I know there's two of them, but just drop it in this one here. You'll see why in a little bit. Um, I like to use the beat repeat. And uh, see, if I were to drop it there, it would be in outside of the audio effect rack. So I want to move it over to the left a little bit, and that's actually going to dra drop it into the audio effect rack. And I'm going to do the same thing with an auto filter making sure that orange line is right there so it lines up perfectly with the audio effects rack. And uh, you know what, actually I'm going to show you guys a little trick here. I'm going to delete this uh, audio effect rack, this new one that I started in channel B. And um, I'm just going to show you how to copy and paste this whole effects rack here into deck B. It's really easy. I've clicked up here and it's now highlighted in orange. I'm going to hold down control on the keyboard. I'm going to click once and I'm going to drag slowly while holding down control and still holding the mouse button down and I'm just gonna let go of the mouse button once it's over deck B and you have an exact duplicate now um, in deck B which is kinda cool really quick and easy so what the audio effects rack does is that it'll allow me to control only the parameters I want to control so you see there's a lot of knobs here and for a simple setup I just want to control maybe eight or six or four of these knobs so the way you do that is you're going to open up the um, macro controls in the effect rack and you have eight of them to choose from and it's really easy to assign um, macro controls to these different knobs in, in uh, these effects devices. So for example I want to set up uh, gain low to be set to macro knob one. So I'm going to right click it and just hit map to macro one. I'm going to do the same thing for the mid but I'm going to map it to macro two. And then the same thing again for the high, but I'm going to map that to macro 3. And uh, so now I want to be able to control these with uh, a MIDI knob on my keyboard. So the way I do that is go up to our MIDI map mode switch button here. And this will bring us into map mode for all of our MIDI controls. So I'm going to click that once. And then I'm going to double click here on the gain low. I'm going to move a knob, and that's changing it now, so I'll be able to control that. Doing the same thing here, double click, moving my MIDI knob, my second one, double clicking, and I'll move my third MIDI knob. And then I'm going to exit MIDI map mode. And now if I turn a knob, you'll see that the macro controls <coughs> are responding to, uh, to what I'm doing. Same thing for the mid and same thing for the highs. So you can see here that it's going past 0 dB, which you don't want to do because if you go up to 6 dB or 2 and a half or whatever it's gonna it's gonna cause problems you want to limit it to where it'll just go up to 0 dB and that's it so no matter how high you turn the knob up it'll always max out at 0 dB I'm gonna show you guys how to do that right now I'm gonna go back into MIDI map mode and on the left hand side here where the device browser used to be um, this is where all your MIDI mappings are and you see you have a value here for minimum and maximum and I'm going to change my maximum to 0 dB and it's really easy just click on it once and I'm going to hit 0 on my computer keyboard hit enter I'm going to do that two more times 
and then I'm going to get out of mini map mode and now I'm going to be constrained to only 0 dB so I'm turning my knob all the way up right now and before it was going up to 6 dB now it's stopping at 0 dB so this is a really big help for constraining your uh, your MIDI parameters to make sure that they don't go too high or you can even set it to, to, to a certain you know if you want it to stop it 29 or 30 dB you can set that as well no matter how low the knob goes it'll always max out at negative 30 dB but uh, we're just gonna keep it at zero for now so that's how you set up the uh, the macro controls for the EQ3 um, and it's pretty much the same it mimics a traditional DJ mixer with uh, mid high and low um, EQ controls and our next one we're gonna set up is our repeat section under beat repeat and I'm going to do the same thing right here under repeat. I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit map to macro 4. And I'm going to change the chance all the way down to 0 because I want to control when this repeat actually happens. Um, so we want to make sure that we have it set to where when we turn the knob up or down, we want it to reach a certain point that's going to kick in and make the repeat button uh, activate. And Right now I have it set up to where I have to assign it to a MIDI real quick. So I'll click on MIDI mode again, double click here, and now I have that assigned to the 12 knob. So now you can see I'm changing this and you and you, if you notice here, the repeat button is lighting up and turning off and it's in between the 62 64 it looks like right around there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the minimum of this knob at about 62 and the maximum at about 70 and that way we can uh, we can actually make the repeat trigger off without having to turn the knob all the way up and then all the way down again so let's enter MIDI map mode again and um, under here uh, the MIDI mappings I'm gonna change the minimum to 62 and I'm gonna change the maximum to say 72 and we'll get out of MIDI map mode real quick and now I'll turn the knob again and you can see it's uh, on off on off pretty pretty simple there that way we don't have to worry about going all the way down and then all the way up it's a it's only an increment of 10 numbers basically so that's uh, enough for the beat repeat I think that's really always you can change variations of the grid as well if you want for beat repeat um, but I'm gonna keep it at 1 16th for now it seems to be the most pleasing for this at this point um, so now we're gonna change our macro options uh, for the auto filter and it's similar same thing I want to change the cutoff here to map it to macro 5 and we'll do the Q to macro 6 and uh, I'm gonna assign these in MIDI map mode again same thing double clicking and moving a knob and now you'll see that the auto filter is being affected by my knob movements again And uh, that's a pretty good effect setup there for uh, for now in our deck A. And uh, you can just do the same exact thing in deck B. Um, and once you have them both set up, um, we want to make sure to save our set under File and then Save Live Set. And that way um, you will not lose any of that information that you just assigned to your uh, macro knobs. 